My name's Matt, welcome back to the shop, and I've had to scroll up like 40 videos to get the next one. So this is the next one, and that was the 18th, Please. That, was, that was December something, when's this? 2018, so this is March 2019, so a bit later, but this is still pre-Covid, so um, is this begging for you to subscribe? Let's go. Please subscribe to help you and your motorcycle perform better. Dave Williams here with <laughs> <He's fucking high. laughs> the long awaited sequel, Trash or Treasure Jixxer 750. Well, there will be several sequels, but in this. That's not a sequel, then, is it? This particular sequel, The Teardown, specifically the rear end. We're going to tear into some rear end. Insert joke here. Now remember, I paid $400 for this bad boy and some people were very upset with that. You're ripping off those people you bought it from. It's worth more than that. Arr, arr, arr. The well, the fact of the matter is, is that it was, I remember this. I'll, I'll, I'll fit in here. His son paid $200 for it and then he paid his son $400 for it. So he's not ripping anybody off. Outrage culture was en fuego. So we're going to find out just how much trash and just how much treasure is in this thing. You never know. Maybe I should have just bought a new bike. Trash or treasure, here it is. Yes, I was grimacing when it fired up because that means I got to strip it all the way down to the ground and rebuild it up to know that when we ride it, it's safe. So here we are manufacturing time for your viewing pleasure. So what does it realistically mean? It means the engine's gonna stay in the frame, the subframe will stay on, but everything else has to come off. Everything. everything. In order to know that when we use this for whatever testing and video work we're gonna do, it is 100% safe to use. I know there's many of you out there that would say it ran, so go ride it. I don't do that. That's not the way I work on a motorcycle. We're vulnerable enough as it is. And for some pretty basic time spent taking things apart, clean lube and adjust, reset, that time and that knowledge that you have in the motorcycle is priceless. Oh, so like putting seized bearings back in. <laughs> I call bullshit, dude. Oh. Let's get this thing into pieces. All right, first job, split pin out. The tab's bent over, so we need to go ahead and pull that tab straight. He's got his marigolds on. Are they the shittest pliers you've ever seen? Don't use pliers. Use um, side cutters, big chunky side cutters that just work better. The edges can get in there cleaner, and you're not trying to cut it, you're just trying to squeeze it. And you, you, will, you will squeeze those two legs together before you cut through them. There's nothing on the back side, so it's just this. So. You're making a bell end of that, Dave. Oh, did he just tap it with the sides of uh, some pliers? Jesus Christ. Oh, what you can do, if you have got some really chunky side cutters that have got narrow noses and that have beef enough, if you can get it there, you just cut it there and this falls out and that falls out and you're all laughing and all good. Don't do that. <laughs> no! Put your hand, put the side of the wall supplies against it and push it. Don't tap it like a retard with two hands. Look at that. Next thing, you get a screwdriver. Have you ever got a screwdriver, a little skinny screwdriver that's knackered? Chop the nose off and then grind the end into a point. And you can stick that in the top of the loop and you can pry it out. So on the front edge here, the piece that broke off needs to tap a little bit straight or straighter oh so we can get it to start. Oh my god, the fucking hammer's come out. Who wants to whine about 
scarring. Is that scarring? Scarring the nut? Who gives a shit about that? You're not even hitting it, Dave. If you if you go if you got something like that, right? Just say you could. Just say that it's not this, but you're trying to tap something like that. It's what punches are for. But if you haven't got, you know, just say it's a big thing. It, I'm not talking about this specifically. I'm talking about anything. Instead of trying to hit the nose of something like that, put a hammer against it and then hit the back of the hammer with another hammer. And before someone starts whinging, you can hit hammers with hammers. You hit fucking anvils with hammers. It's absolutely fine. It does. <laughs> this guy hates Dave. Oh, it dawned on him. Now you see, look, if you get a... If you get a pointy thing and stick it in there, you leave it out. Alright, got it. What are they? My first flyers? We won't use one of those again. We won't use that one again. Did you just say we won't use one of those again? Hey Dave, that strap's really in your way, isn't it? He has got a paddock stand and a chock at the front and another stand in the middle coming off the pegs. Why do you need ratchet straps? Catch. No, no, no. This is seven years old, Dave. You need to tap that through. <sighs> That's encouraging. <laughs> Dave has never taken anything apart. I took my axle off the Z900 literally four days ago to change my rear tyre. It gets stuck. It's just what happens. And the last time I took a tyre off that was a year and a half ago. Oh, it wasn't. It was eight months ago because I had to put a plug in it. So the concern is that this won't move in here, that at some point we've got to find out if internally the space is missing in the cush drive because if it was and it was ridden, it'll weld to the axle. What? So here's the first stopping point. David, Why talking is the shit. axle frozen? It's dry. So the next piece is a little bit of gentle encouragement. You can use a sand hammer or a dead blow hammer. Um, I'm going to use a hard rubber hammer and just a, a, a sand hammer. I, I wish I had a sand. Try hammer. and tap it and see if it, some people call them glass hammers. It'll break free. If it won't break free, we have a much it bigger will. problem to try and solve. Also, put the nut on it to you turn the nut the other way around and just thread, just get like four threads on the nut or three threads on the nut. Get a crack on the back of the nut. In getting this axle completely out of this. The other thing as well is if you see, because of the adjuster, it's all the way to the back, right? So, because you've now taken the adjuster off, give the tyre a kick towards the front. Hold the back of the bike and just boot the tyre and just it'll free it up a bit. Wheel to get the wheel off. And if we can't get the axle out at all and it's welded in place... It's not fucking welded. Bollocks. Someone please send me an example of anyone who's had a... A... <laughs> A axle that is welded. He seems to think that the axle spins. That presents a massive problem that is basically a full stop point at this time, which is a nightmare. So fingers crossed. The, nothing that touches the axle spins. The inside of the bearing race that literally the axle sits in does not spin. It's the outer race of the bearing that spins with the wheel. The spacers don't spin. They are clamped by the nut, or by the axle and the nut. There you go. You see, look, you just have to stop in a fanny. Oh, and hit it. <laughs> oh. Anybody wants to suggest putting the nut back on? Well, if you know these things, do them. He's hitting it with a soft face, hammer. It doesn't really matter. It's coming. Like I say, you boot that wheel in, it'll free up. It's because when the bike was under power, the force of the wheel trying to push the bike is literally pushing the wheel back against 
well, wherever the, 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 what is it, the blocks are. That's why you have these adjusters to stop them pushing towards the actual centre of the bike. So everything is all jammed up and tight and it's been sat there for, well, seven years. So it just nicely sits there, becomes a bit crusty and just stays there. Any grease or any anything that's in there dries out and it all just sticks, right? Just, you know, static friction. And you just need to... This is why sometimes it's good to... If you've got a bit of a frozen fastener, like a proper nut and bolt kind of thing, you just give it a bit of a shock. You just shock it a bit. It just gets... It just opens the gaps between things as the sound waves move up and down it just basically frees stuff up a bit and it just helps you you know just helps you fucking get it loose <clears throat> it's dry this is why this is why you usually put a light smear of grease on your axle it just stops it sticking but eventually that grease will probably just run out dry out cake up and fuck off <clears throat> it's piss easy it's dry. It's just dry. It's not welded. It's fucking welded. Can you even see the space. list of comments now? Other space. Okay, what? Of course it was going to move. It was a GSXR. Well, no. You've just never done this before. Or clearly. It's nothing to do with it being a Suzuki, you div. <laughs> you want to grab your carrier? Get rid of that out of the way. Come on. No. You got your chain off? I thought he slapped his chain on, that'd be funny. I've seen people do that as well. That wheel looks like it could do with a bit of heat. <laughs> okay. All right, so next, space is in. So right, so he reckons his cush drive is knackered. It's done 15,000 miles. Nope. There might be, and it's like there might be a tiny bit starting to crack and stuff like that, but they don't look like it. They've got that powdery shit on them. That's good. Where was that going to weld, Dave? Because it sits in the bearing for the sprocket carrier and it doesn't touch anything else. It sits, this face, this inner face here sits against the inner race of this bearing. Right? So, what are you talking about? Things welding together. You're talking, um, oh, shit. Next piece to look at are these rubber drums. Oh, he said if it was missing. So if it was missing, you'd just clamp your wheel solid. Drives and how loose the cush drive is in it. That's not, you, your sprocket doesn't do that. It's wobbling everywhere. So when we so, put this in gear. Oh, we went through this like in the live stream, but turn it, it turns, it doesn't wobble. It's going to smash forward so we have to go ahead and pull these out you're talking shit they're fine they're, only... they're literally i'm looking at them now they're literally fine absolutely perfectly fine actually let's go and have a look right um just because like i say why he says one thing i say another so um wrecked cush drive rubbers these are what wrecked cush drive rubbers look like Right, we'll be able to find one. Um, See, so they're they're fine. <laughs> they're fine. Maybe wreck's not the word. Um, worn, maybe. Worn, um, worn. We'll probably put worn out. What are written cush drive rubbers? Someone's got to have a picture. Craig had a picture recently and these were all shredded, but I can't bother going looking through all this shit. Um, oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, my video. That's weird. What's this say? Uh, See, they're just mucky and used, but it doesn't mean you have to replace them. No one's got a picture of some, because you, you get some really bad ones. No one's got a picture of some really bad ones. Like, you can always, you, you turn the sprocket, right, and the thing moves, it, like, rotates. 
They're the buggers. <laughs> Uh, that's an old school one. Though. That's not a very good example. There, there we go. So these are what they come like, and these are all absolutely the the, the things between them are torn, but they're absolutely they'll be like look, you can see them mucky and absolutely battered. You get bits. You know what I mean? You get like bits of them. Uh, you get all these bits flake off and stuff. They get trapped and caught and pounded and just knackered and all this rubbish. But um, it's all about rotation. That's what they do. That's what they cushion. There, look. There's a good one. Look. look see, you get bits like this. Right? You get bits. And what the fucking hell is that? And it comes... When you open it up, and it's knackered. There. Because it, it, what matters is these sides. These top bits. That might be just part of the casting that rubs against it. It's not the end of the world. And when the, if, if they're really dry and stupidly, like... Cracky and just knackered and toast. This is 15,000 miles. It's seven years old. Well, no, it's not even this older than that, but they look fine. They, I wouldn't change them. Kept in with a little rubber nipple, and these have got to be replaced. Have they? That doesn't work at all. The interior spacer pops right out. As in shockingly good, Nick. So that's good. And the wheel bearing is nice and smooth on this side of the cush drive. That's not, a wheel, that's not a wheel bearing, that's the sprocket carrier bearing. Very smooth, in fact. So that's very reassuring. So, so good so far there. Come on. What are you doing? What is he doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What is he doing? There we go. It's funny the other side. Take That's the spacer out, check this bearing. <sighs> Alright, next we've got to pull the chain guard. So we've got to see what we've got. Now we've got a Phillips screw. Oh. We've got a push pin, and then it's located down here with another push pin. So... This is, this is, uh, is this how this is going to go down? You surely, all the little auxiliary shit, you just take that off off camera, or do a really fast time lapse jobby. There's that. There's that. I thought they'd annoy you with that one. Although saying that push pins do come out. And there's that. They just rattle themselves out now and then. Just needs a clean, doesn't it? I always put everything back where it belongs and it came from. That way we don't lose anything. So the next thing to do is... You're going to lose them. but Keep them in the plastic bit. Check the rear brake caliper. Seized. There's kind of some brake material left. Yeah, there is. There's enough. There's fucking lobs. So the next thing is, does it work? Seized. No. We've got to break the lobs. They're one of the first ones to go all the time. Oh, shock bolt out. Hopefully we can get these off without needing an impact gun. So first thing is, let's see what we can get in terms of tension here. Okay, that's moving, so that's reassuring. Just uh, get the chain off first. It's in your way, it's gooey, it's acky. Just cut the bugger and put it in the bin. So now we need to hold this in place. Your marigold's on. You're not oh, even... Go where you're supposed <laughs> to go. Uh, Come on. Uh, there we go. Oh, Jesus. That's it. I tell you what, don't use your ratchet, will you? Oh. <laughs> uh. Do you know what I don't understand? This is on a bike lift. So lift it up. Why has he straddled over the, the swing arm? Okay, nut off. When he could lift it up. Now we need to go to the top of the shark. 
Now hopefully this will break by itself and we won't need anything on the other side, but we'll see. Now right, it'll start to turn. That was much looser. And the nut's coming off all by itself. Yep. Is it captive on the other side? Okay, that's done. So with standard foot pegs, they bend and flop. So what we've got here is the U-joint that it actually gets into. First thing is to make sure the U-joint. That's not a new joint, that's a pivot. Sure everything's in place. Yeah. Now the bike's tied down firmly, so it'll resist for a second until we get past where we need to go. And then we've got to make sure it stays put. This is not dodgy at all. There is two of you, you know this, don't you? Yep. Remove the top bolt first. Them ratchet straps are completely useless. You see how baggy they were? That comes out here. They're not even out pulling it to the ground. <laughs> There's a top bolt. Now go find the top nut. That's out. So we'll put the top bolt back in. Then we'll pull the bottom bolt. This, this, this. Find this the Dave bottom is, nut. This Dave is other Dave's little bitch, isn't he? That's not had much lube on it, ever. Oh, the, from the factory. So, it's zinc. Now we can pull the shock. It's doing exactly what it's designed to do. Look out. Be an anode. Hopefully. Now uh, that rear number plate holder might not allow us to do it. That's not a rear, rear number plate holder. <sighs> what are you talking about? What? The under tray? No, it won't. Okay. Let's it's see. a rear number plate holder. Easy. Ten Phillips. That's not a number plate holder, is it? I thought that's where your rubber flat goes. Yep. You have a number plate behind. You have a number plate behind your wheel. <laughs> Crazy Americans. Because that is right behind your wheel, is it not? How do you see that? I don't believe that. Let's just go back. Is he taking the number plate off it? Do that. That's not the way I work on a motorcycle. We're vulnerable enough as it is. There's that. There's the slotted holes. That's right behind your wheel. You can't put a number plate there. You get trapped when the shock moves. What are you talking about, Dave? He needs more cocaine. He needs more. Might be the sepsis going to, your, going to your head, mate. Oh, look, that ratchet strap's right in your fucking way, innit? I said that earlier. <laughs> there we go. Come on. Well, usually what you do is you put... <laughs> Right, stop, stop. Usually what you do is you put these as part of your swing arm and you put the whole thing in at once. So usually, generally what you do is you try and take the whole thing out as one as well. Oh, well. Oh, notice that. What? Subframe, subframe bolts are missing. All of them, see it move? Oh. oh. A new discovery to add to the list. Subframe bolts. Let's take that off. So you... So hang about. So basically, you're using ratchet straps on a subframe that's not even mounted. I I've got sneaking suspicions about that. This bike has just been used. Why would someone take all four subframe bolts out? And you did this when you took your tank out and didn't notice. Hmm. I don't know if I believe that. I I reckon that's a created. Look at the shitty state of the tank. Ah, it's been resprayed. Look at that tank. That's not a factory finish at all. 
Maybe, maybe some some wiggle room. Maybe someone's crashed this before and put it back together. Maybe this is a bastardized bike. Maybe I'll be checking all the VIN numbers to be quite honest. <laughs> this is why they don't take shocks out like this, Dave. You'd think I've been a suspension expert. This guy would know this. Why are you stuck on? It's too wide for the gap, Dave. I reckon he's taken those bolts out to get this shock out and then he's made it sound like it's some mystery. I don't reckon that anyone was sat on this or anyone bought this or he did this taking that tank off or he put ratchet straps or anything on this bike with that subframe not been mounted. I reckon he's taken this side out to get that bolt out and then said it's some kind of weird mystery. Okay. Thing is, we never get a close-up of the bike to be able to see, you know, like when, he scan, when they scan past it or anything. Dave, that's not going to come out of there, mate. That's it. Bend it. Bend it. You see? I reckon... Some frame bolts, bolts Mr. Williams, if you would be so kind <laughs> to add those to the list. That would have made for an interesting ride. Now, I'm really curious to know what this is. What is? Okay, good. Yeah, see it. So I'm wondering what this thing is. I have no what? idea. It doesn't belong oh. there. I'm not sure what it is. Let's go find out. Is it metal or is it a pipe? <clears throat> if it's a pipe, it'll be a bleed. It'll be bloody a runoff pipe from the battery box or the air box or fucking the fuel tank. What is it? Is it a bolt? It didn't really show us what it was. Feels like a bolt, but no, it's oh no, it's not. It's not a bolt. What is it? It's a broken screwdriver. It's the original screwdriver because oh, there's the lock top. The toolkit screwdriver. No, so it's not. that's been stuck between the engine and the swing arm. No, it's not. It's far too big. The the ones for the toolkits have a, a Phillips and a flathead on either side, and that them tangs are on in the middle. As the swing arm's been pivoting that way, that's what the burnish marks are on it. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Wow. Show us it on the swing arm, I don't believe you. But that could have been dropped because it's been in a garage or a shed. What other delightful trash might we find in our treasure of a GSXR 750? Let's continue. I want right, to see next marks. Next, we've got to try and break the... I want to see the marks on the swing arm and the, the engine where it's been pivoting against that. I very much doubt it. Very much doubt it. Nuts loose off the linkage arm. So there's one here and one there. Get on with it then. Maybe if you jack it up, it'd be easier to get at. It's in really good nick, really. Leverage, Mr. Moss. No. All right, so we'll uh, we'll do the leverage piece. Do what? The foot. Oh, for fuck's sake! That's French for foot. Well, it <coughs> is. Okay. I love how it says, "Who wants to whinge, dude?" This is what my entire series on this is. You fucking bandit. <sighs> You thought it'd have an impact gun, and you thought you'd take the exhaust off. This is the thing, right? If you're going... Oh, we're going to take the entire back end off. Well, all right, then. We'll take the exhaust off, then. It's in your way. Just take it off. Get it out of the way. Start from the outside working in. I don't know why you're trying to fucking make it difficult for yourself. Oh, dear me. She's a treasure. <sighs> No, it's just She's on the pipe. She needs a little tender loving care. I don't know why everyone complains about bolts being tight. I'm like, good. Fuck, they're not coming good. off. Delicate flower that she is.
All right, bolts out, if they'll move. That one's moving fine, but notice that it's stuck on the end here. See that? No. Watch that. Uh, All right. So it's seized there. It's not seized in this little tap, you bloody wimp. It's seized so here. One's, that one's up. The other one's doing it. It's been pressed against it with that much, with that much tension. You just realised how much it was, how much torque you required to break that tension of that ram. And then you're like, oh, fucking look, it's stuck on there. Get a little tap, it'll fall off. Fucking dog bones. They got, I'll say, coated again. Off. Let's pry that one out. It'll go. There it is. All right. Another question is, can we break it free of that? Chains um, in the wall. Is this one seized as well? It looks like it. Hold it. Tap it. You get, get your rubber hammer out. Get your tap. It'll pop out. Yeah, both are seized. Oh, that's seized. So is that... Oh, your chain's in the way, look, you it's dickhead. It's here. That's... And your side stand. Yeah. So to get... Get that out. Get that out. We'd have, we want to take the kickstand off first. Yeah. It's a linkage arm. Cush drive. From the frame to the cush shock. lever sorry not cush drive all right here we go oh dear even i'm getting it wrong stop listening to dave <laughs> feet all the way how do you do mechanics dave foot power oh it's it's pounds feet Excellent. Oh, look. What happened? Oh, that's the other one. No, sorry. That's the Are wrong one. you? <laughs> Dave, you do suspension all okay. the time. You should... Well, that's good. You should know this. Good to know. So this all has to come off. Yes. The kickstand is our nemesis. No. That wasn't even tight. Oh, now we complain it's not tight now. Right, it comes off as one big bracket. Let's all protect the whole thing off. Of course, this is probably bent to high heaven. Chance to wind up the audio static. Yep, I don't say anything. It goes super tight and then it frees right up. There it goes. Yep. You'll get there, Dave. No, you'd see, take the whole bracket off. Oh, actually, no, sorry, does this have a bracket? I think it does. Okay. They usually do. Like the whole carrier there. Take the whole thing off. That's off. Oh, no, he hasn't bothered. 90 degrees. No. That's not working either. We got the impact gun. <clears throat> Hey, see, that's what I'm talking about, the whole bracket. Just get on with it. Uh. Well, you gotta go the right way, though. No, always go the hard way first. <laughs> Tighten first. I didn't know you don't. And then that shakes Dickhead. it, and it should come off easier. Ah! <laughs> If you're just making shit up. I didn't look at it. I wasn't right looking way, at it. No, always go. Was it? Was it? I can't. I can't see. Yeah, yeah. He's trying to tighten it up. You dickhead. You could. You could shear it off doing that, and that's into the frame. So this bit here, this big bulky bit, you can see the light coming off. That's the frame. This is the plate. And you take the plate off, and you take the whole side stand off. You don't fuck around like he's been doing. Well, you got to go the right way, though. No, always go the hard way first. And I want to use oh, an impact gun. First. You get a right good Allen key, just so you can. F you need the feedback so you can feel it coming off. And you can get an Allen key under there and slip a little pole over your Allen key and just give it a eh. And then that shakes it and it should come off easier. That's a lot of shite, dude. Ninja mask. <sighs> okay. He's not a ninja, he's a fucking idiot. Now the question is, I can't get to this one. So, we should see him tighten first on the next one. 
if we if we're gonna follow his 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 bullshit. This way, we went this way. So we need another tie down. What do you want tie downs for? It's a bungee. Around. Scratching what up? There we go. Let's see if I can switch it to the hard way first. No, I can't see it. There. Oh, you literally just believe that's a thing. <laughs> Look at that Loctite. Beautiful. Could have heated that up, Dave, and killed no. the Loctite. That's too high. Cut the chain. That's out of the way. No, it's not. Unplug your bloody side stand switch. Unplug it, unplug right, it, let's unplug push it. Push this down a little bit. Oh, for fuck's sake. He literally did. He literally did just try and tighten that just to save face. Even though all of these other fasteners, he's undo, undone them the right way. What a bell end. What a complete bell end. It's got enough cobwebs on it, hasn't it? Okay, that's out. That's out. So there's a shim on the other side. So we've got to we'll just, no, you make just, sure that what? You just pull it out now. Both shims are in place. Just pull. No. So there's that one. And just that what one. are you doing? Why are you fanning Runs around? Where they're supposed to be. What are you doing? Now that needs to hang out of the way. Just pull it out. And that will come out. Right now, get on the bench and get a tap, and the bolts will come out. And then we can see all the corrosion here. They're not shims. The bushes. You should know this. Tons of corrosion. Jeez. Now we can see if we can break the bolts free. Easy. Give them a tap. Now we've got to pull this bushing out. Ah, oh, it doesn't. It's a bushing. And you can see it's all corroded up in here. What? Yep. That's, there that's what the anode does. It is corroded, but it's designed to touched. do this. And you can see all the corrosion on both sides here that we've Probably got to break apart to get these bolts out of I'd here. Whack it. On a bench. Because this binds, these bolts won't move at all, so it binds the linkage when it's trying to move. All bad. No, 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 no Dave, that's nonsense, because the bush is sitting bearings. You're talking fucking nonsense. The other thing we've got to look at They're is... Not, the, you see, look, all them bearings in there, the pin... <laughs> the bolts are not meant to rotate in the dog bones. We'll roll the bearings. Fuck me. Bearings in there. That's why you have that bushing so, follow-up, the inner race, and then bearings. And you can see all the needles. Yeah. So what we've got to do is make sure every single one of his is in there, and every single one of those is intact. And if not, then this has to get sent away to the shop. Why? For those bearings to be extracted and new bearings why? to be put in. Put them in yourself. Even, Del, even fucking Dell can put bearings in. Are you fucking kidding me? Same goes on the other side. Let's pull the nut off, pull the bushing out. See how corroded that is again. But the, 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 they're meant to be locked together, it doesn't matter. And then your bearings are inside. Oh, you clean them up, bit of grease. And then this one with the shims, <coughs> which attaches to the frame, pulls out just the same way. Oof, that's gritty. Is it? It's not good. Oh, that's dry as a bone in there. It looks Ooh, fine. It, it looks like it's got grease all over it. That's a mess. <coughs> right, could be that's better. breaking. Okay. So my suggestion, Moss, was to put it in the vise over there. Oh. Use the vise to help. But you said they're hollow bolts. Holy moly. Weight saving, baby. Right. You compress this. Yeah, you can put a fair bit of force on it, but you put it out around because they're drilled out. That wonderful weight saving game we got on from 2000 in weight saving wars through 2008. Right. A lot of these are hollow. Right. And because they're so badly corroded. Whack it. The only thing realistically we can do. Literally hold one bolt and then just get the other one and tap it against a bit of wood and it'll pop out. Do for now is just soak them. It's not, there's no welding going on, right? <laughs> and it's, just leave it up, right? 
and soak them in penetrating oil. Yes, we could clamp it in a vise here, and yes, we could work it and work it and work it and work it and get it going, but we don't have time for that right now because I have the rest oh. of the bike to pull apart. Well, you have so to we'll just point. leave this upright and soak it with penetrating lube around both sides. PB blaster. Over the course of the next day or so and hope it gets inside. And if it doesn't, then yes, we have to bring more manly force to the no, table. No, just heat it up if you All want. Right, we have ourselves here I'll on the swing arm pivot bolt. Heat up, let it cool down, it'll just pop out. We'll just get a tap, 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 and pump. Oh, there we go, it pops Get out. A castle a bit of wood. nut. Stupid right. nut. So. Why is it stupid? I don't have the Suzuki tool to be able to do that. Get a socket, get a grinder, you'd be laughing. Nor do I have a socket that is the right internal and external diameter uh -huh. to go ahead and cut and put in place to get this off. So Dave's the master of bikes and he doesn't have any castellated sockets to get that open. Fuck me. So the only way to loosen that up is to ever, ever so gently tap it with a screwdriver. And no, see if it... no, no, with a punch, not a screwdriver, you div. I'll get a pin spanner. Fuck me. Or free. I want to pull the swing arm out to be able to assess the needle roller bearings in the swing arm. Before we do that, there's one very quick test, which will tell us whether we're in good shape or not, which is really easy, which Can is feel wiggle. It? Does it wiggle it? side to side? No. The bike moves side to side. Does it move freely? Yes. So no wiggle and no grinding, all the other stuff. It looks Grinding. like it's in reasonable shape. Just derelict at this point. So let's go ahead and soak that. Give it a minute. Uh. And then while that's soaking, we'll go ahead and pull this lock nut off. Right, so, again, I see people do this all the time. Do not put something like that, a socket, and then pull up. Because what you are doing is pulling the bike up. You are pulling it up and you are this side of the bike. That is going to cause the bike to want to literally rotate off the stand. His pivot point is literally, his mounting point is right there next to this, right? Don't do this. Have it coming this way and push down, because at least then you're forcing the bike down onto the axle stands. Jesus Christ. Oy. Thank you. Very kind of you to let yourself come out without four it, veins and a hernia. Sepsis, mate, sepsis. <laughs> oh, dear. What? Same old, same old, same old. Right. Look what do you think that, that is, Dave? It's weird. So, what does he think that is? So it's not rust, is it? But all these parts are steel. It's weird. If we think we're going to get that out at this point by just unscrewing it, that ain't happening. Of course you are. This bell end. So, let's give this a good squirt as well. Squirt. It sounds so stupid in American, squirt. It sounds so much better in British, squirt. Okay. All right, it's so rather than tap this ring right now, because right. this ring could be seized here because of all the corrosion, I got my axle tool from 15 years ago. That fits in the hole. So now why don't we just break it free? We're mm. there and see now it's been soaking for quite it's a while. Is lifting up again. Stop lifting up, Dave. Push down. There it goes. Okay. Oh, he said and there's no way that's freely. Coming out. Okay, so <laughs> remember, he said there's no way that's coming out. No, the swing arm will come out at this point. <laughs> to get the swinging arm out, we can't take this off. So we know that the master cylinder on the rear brake needs to be rebuilt. So we'll go ahead and take the line off up here at the master cylinder, which right. will then leave the line free to come with the swing arm. Because right. inside the swing arm, there's a welded piece, which Dave will show when we pull the swing arm out down here that's welded in location. Right. And you have to feed the brake line through to get it out. Onwards. Right. 
Okay, but wait, explain that stupid castle nut and its purpose in life. Okay, that's a lock nut. It's so you can position the, position the swing arm in the middle. So, when this is... I know how he's laughing, but the fact of the matter is, is because you've wound the nut, because you've wound the axle out, the lock nut has got nothing to press against to apply a preload. <laughs> so... And it, 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 cause the fact that he's laughing means he clearly doesn't understand what it does. When this is... Suspension expert. Remember that. Suspension expert. Fastened back up. And this was just funny because with the soaking of the oil, it actually started moving, so we'll move it back. No, you no. You set your swing arm tight, and then you torque it to the specific value, and then you come in with a castle nut tool, and this gets screwed in. Right. And now there's an associated torque value with this, which is yeah. very low. This becomes a friction fit between the frame and this. So right. if the nut falls off the other side, you have a little bit of redundancy here no. in not letting the swing arm pivot, bolt, and screw itself. No. Wow. No. No. It's That's all wrong, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and what's amazing is it doesn't need to be this long at all. So a 12 mil nut on the brake line, but... You can't get that in there. Before I do that, so... Good God, really? He's just a wimp. <sighs> Spanners, he's coming out, you're on, a, you're, on a piss, you're on the piss. Don't strip it out. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay, no. Sustained force is a wonderful thing. How is it? Where do you that fucking gem from? No, oh, look at that. It's dry as a bone. Well, you would have thought so, <laughs> wouldn't you? No brake fluid, senor. Well, it's been sat there forever. It then. I might have to throw it away because it's all completely corroded and decomposed. Negative oh. Nelly. Oh, wait. It's a GSXR. Of course it's going to be fine. A bit retarded, didn't he? Putting out positive energy to the universe. I don't know if you can. Can you stuff that through there? Right. Yeah, you can. I think you can. Okay. You want new banjo bolts anyway. All right. Everything could, is now clear, which gives. You could set the caliper off the carrier. You can also do that. Gives us the, the opportunity to remove the swing arm, so we'll see if we can get this bolt out. Oh, Just because it turns doesn't mean it'll go all the way through. Well, look at it. <laughs> See you later. That's crazy, isn't it? Imagine that. All right, let's stop turning. There it goes. That's the end. Yep. Okay. All right. So hold. Wiggle. And this is where the corrosion on that other side can be a big impact. So why don't you clean it off? And it wasn't because that's on the thread. Oh look, that, how easy did that come out compared to his rear axle? And he's like, there's no way, we, look at all that corrosion, there's no way we're going to get that off. He's so full of shit, it's painful. That's all fully corroded. All right. You got it out though, it's pissed on it. Get around where I need to be. Have you noticed he's, Sorry, he's acting dude. less like a fanny the more he realises that he just needs a bit of umphing? So that will slide back. Chain off. And oh, he hasn't bothered. Oh, no. Oh, no. We'll Engage right brain. Oh. I do. He's a dickhead. All right, now it's out. Next on bearing checks. So this is a grease cover, which should have a lot of grease on it, which, of course, it oh, does. does. Next. Just Comes the spacer, which is also the bearing surface, which... No, it's the inner race. It's not a spacer, you dickhead. Spacers space things out. It's to, it's to have a tolerance stack. I'll just have a stack. It's not a spacer, you dickhead. has grease on it. Yes. <sighs> it's the inner and race. And then, of course, we have yet another needle roller bearing set in yeah. each side. And, and then you probably and want to inside that on the well. bottom, back here... Oh, it depends on it. 
Let's move that across. There's also another set of bearings in here. So our chain guide is here. And the chain guide clamps and holds the cover plate here on. So for us to be able to get into this and get to the bearings, there are two 10 millimeters. Why don't you just get it all off, completely off, and then show us on the bench and have it all stripped out on the bench. Take it apart as you go, not this shite. The bolts. God's sake, this is nearly over, thank God. Are you going to cut that chain at any, any point? Or are you just going to have, have it hanging around? Ah, there's three actually. There's one there as well. well. There we go. Get rid of the spiders. Amazing what shows up. Well, I, think, I think the spider's saying that about you. Fucking you know, hell, look at him. It's amazing what shows up. Not good. Not coming out. That's bad. <sighs> so the well nut inside may be stripped. The well nut? No, it's threaded straight into the aluminium, I'm sure it is. Same, not coming out. And. I just snapped them off. They are shitty fast as they are. And it's because they thread them straight into the aluminium. The common, the snap. He's coming the time. out. They snap all the time. I've seen loads like that. I think there's one in the SV. We can just, now that that bottom's out, we can get in here, the covers here, the bearings there. See how rusty that is? And then we can just bend it out of the way and look. Now, as far no, as the chain goes, we off. could cut that chain right now yeah. and then get the swing arm out and be yeah. able to work on it much easier. Yeah. I'd rather cut the chain and then feed the new chain all the way through and then go ahead and peen it while the wheel is in because it's just so much easier. So I'm not going to cut the chain now because I don't need to take the swing arm out to have it refurbished, painted, whatever. It doesn't need that. We're not going to go that way. Just to give you an idea wow. of what it takes to replace the swing arm start to finish, we did it on the white Gixxer 750 because it had to be replaced due to the crash. It broke off one of the rear stand bobbins. So here you go. Oh look, he got a grinder and he just cut the this chain. This is about 20 seconds long. We're into it. So I just cut the chain. This took so he's done these several times on different bikes on a GSX-R750 and he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. Two hours. I reckon this is really recent. Two hours in the 20 seconds. That's what it takes, start to finish, if you know what the heck you're doing. Oh, well, it doesn't. We've just seen that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I reckon that was put together later on because some of these videos are all over the place. Hope that makes sense and I will see you in a bit.